environment. From the time we learned to cut down trees to the Industrial Revolution, we have been impacting our environment in such a way to change our climate. Since 1990, America has increased our carbon dioxide emissions by 20%. By the year 2020, it is said that we will increase by another 15% if the pollution we cause is not controlled. Globally, from the year 1990 to the year 1999, emission rates were 0.8%. But from the years 2000 to 2005, the rates have reached over 3%. The USA alone uses a quarter of the world's fossil fuels. Two-thirds of the amount we consume is used for transportation. Burning fossil fuels to produce and run cars release CO2 gas, which is a major greenhouse gas. There are other greenhouse gases, both natural and industrial, such as water vapor, methane, nitrous oxide, ozone, and chlorofluorocarbons. But CO2 is a greenhouse gas that traps the heat from the sun that is supposed to exit our atmosphere, which causes global climate change. If there is no change of how an average American lives his or her life, global warming will be a persisting and dangerous problem to our future generations. Around the year 2080, it is said that natural disasters such as drought, rising sea level, flooding, and hurricanes would intensify and possibly lead to the deaths of 200 million people. Since transportation has been the leading factor in contributing to carbon dioxide emissions and ultimately global warming, the solution will be found in new technology for transportation. There have been many attempts to make a policy to control climate change, but most of these have ended up failing. At the international level, the Kyoto Protocol that calls for developed countries to cut emissions to 5% below 1990 emissions level between 2008 in 2012. However, Australia and the United States refused to sign on. There has also been consideration of drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in the 1970s to decrease United States dependency on foreign oil. However, there is only a 50% chance of getting 5.3 billion barrels, and the United States consumed 7.6 billion barrels in 2007, meaning little to no benefit from drilling in the refuge. Another attempt to resolve the issue was to increase fuel efficiency. The corporate average fuel economy, CAFE standards, had the job of raising fuel efficiency since the 1970s. CAFE standards have raised fuel efficiency from 1979 to 1996 and from 2003 to present day. However, these standards have only affected light trucks. The standards for passenger cars have stopped being raised more than two decades ago. California, which has the worst air quality in the United States, had originally given incentives to alternatively fueled vehicles. The California Air Resource Board had initially strict regulations, such as the Zero Emissions Vehicle Law, to ensure low emissions vehicles were being sold. Yet the car and oil companies lobbied for more time and less strict regulations.